Hi guys and welcome to the next video in the Unit 14 assignment series. We're going to be looking at the second activity of our exam paper, Activity 2, which deals with the IT service catalogue. So let's have a look at the activity itself. Here we can see that we've been asked to produce an IT service catalogue by defining the individual IT services for the current and future IT requirements for each given function of the organisation. We are to use the template Define IT service catalogs.rtf. When you get into the exam room and when you're on your computer, you'll have access to the three templates as discussed earlier on inside of your areas. Make sure that when you do save your work that you save it activity2 catalog underscore your registration number, your surname and the first letter of your first name when you save your work. So let's have a look at the template that we get provided. As you can see, we've got three columns in the template. We have a column for function, a column for service name, and a column for service description. First of all, let's look at the function column. This is the area where we're going to want to put the information about the functions inside of the company that we've been provided. A function could be the owner, assistant manager, or any other role within the organization. It's advisable that when you go into the function area that you put in what the functions are that the owner conducts, operates, or does. For example, if an owner was to hire staff or that they managed a website or that they created staff rotors or dealt with the financial elements, you'd want to put this just underneath the owner's function. Try to include all of this information inside the same block or cell or row so that it keeps all the information together. Then we move on to the service name. The service name is the area where we talk about what equipment both hardware and software that we want to provide the owner or whoever we're talking about in this instance. You might want to include things like mouse and keyboard. These are standing items, but they're obviously clear things that most individuals will require when they do their job. Then we can start to get a little bit more specific. If you think there's a computer that would be required for a person because of their job and their roles, for example, a graphics designer, it might be wise in this area here to identify that it's going to be a computer of a fairly high standard. If you want to, you could apply information to say what standard the processor would be, the memory, the hard drive space, and any other specifics around the hardware. After we've discussed the hardware, we're going to also need to talk about the software that would be required for those individuals. Think about the day-to-day -day runnings of their jobs. So things like Microsoft Office as a suite would be needed for most organizations. We can talk about the use of Office 365 or the individual programs itself, such as Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Access, etc. If there are any areas within the organization's roles or the function's roles that you think might be advisable for them to have, such as things like accounting software such as Sage, you should put this into this area here. Finally, we move on to the service description area. Here we're going to be looking at how we can justify and provide guidance as to why we've chosen the service names that we have. So it might be worthwhile explaining what the role requires the person to do on a day-to-day -day task and without a piece of equipment of that standard that they will struggle to do so. We also need to go through our software. So just give some clear indication as to you knowing what your function is going to need to do on their job. So for example, if they're dealing with financial information, they're going to be using Sage to record this so that they can do whatever they need to do and send the information to accountants and other people within the organization. So this is the structure inside of Activity 2. Essentially, Activity 2 is a very big catalog of you recommending hardware and software for those individuals inside of the organization for someone to go down to the local hardware area and pick up the software and the hardware required for those inside the organization. Also worth remembering, when you're in the function area talking about the owner, assistant manager, or anybody within the organization, if there's more than one of those roles in the organization, put a little bracket beside the name of that title and indicate how many people are of that role inside the organization. For example, putting a number two beside it if there are two assistant managers. And finally, when we're dealing with our IT service catalog, also mention about any external contractors that might need certain resource requirements. Remember, if you have people working for your company, you might not necessarily want them to have their own equipment to use within your organization. Therefore, you might want to think about providing them with the appropriate hardware and software for them to do their roles. People like accountants might necessarily need 
a specific PC just to do their things like auditing or things like HR and payroll. When we look at other external contractors, such as the IT people that might be looking after our IT systems, we might give them a little bit of creative freedom because we want them to have access to all of our systems. So things like VPNs and having encrypted computers might allow them to do their roles because they're going to have ultimate access over all of our systems. Here you can see the marking breakdown for the Activity 2 Produce an IT Service Catalogue. What we're looking at here is four bands that your marks will be awarded under. We can see here that the first band is band zero, that there might be material that can't be awarded any marks. We're not hopefully going to fall into this situation with any of our work because we're going to make sure that we provide stuff that's going to be of use to our examiners. What we're going to be looking at are the following bands, band one, two, three. As you can see, each band carries certain amounts of marks and we're going to be looking at and targeting band three in all of our questions. Band three obviously carries the six to eight marks. So if we look at the bands below that, just so that we're clear on what we need to build on, is band one is our lowest end. This is where we're going to be in a situation where we've provided limited information from our scenario to produce an IT service catalogue. It says here that we might identify some IT services, um, but they are largely generic and may not clearly be linked to given business functions. So remember, obviously, if we're looking at specifics such as owners, assistant managers, we need to make sure that we're being quite specific when it comes to those areas. Service names and descriptions of the IT services contain inaccuracies that show limited understanding of the organization's requirements. So here it's quite obvious that you need to make sure that when you're reading the set task brief and all of the notes that you may have acquired inside of activity A or part exam A, that you need to make sure you're really reading these and pulling out those key nuggets of information because otherwise you're going to fall into the lower bands here. We can see when we move up to bands three and two, there is some relevant information from the scenario is used to produce an IT service catalog. The IT services identified that are mostly appropriate for the business's given functions, appropriate, mostly accurate service names and service descriptions, and descriptions of the IT services that show basic understanding of the organization's requirements. So that's kind of like a, a middle of the road option there. If we just put in a few bits and pieces up about some of the roles, obviously it might be a bit generic. So we've got to be very careful that we could fall into the lower band of band one. Now we're going to look at band three, our target. It says relevant information from the scenario is used to produce an IT service catalog, including IT services are identified that are fully appropriate for the given business functions. So making sure that we make sure that we talk about the owners and those individuals and those roles with the inside of the organization and what their functions are. And it says accurate service names and descriptions of the IT services that show a sound understanding of the organization's requirements. So let's make sure that when we're talking about the services such as the software and the hardware, that we're being quite specific as to what their needs would be based upon their roles within the organization. It says service names and descriptions are clear and concise and could be easily be understood by a non-IT specialist. Remember, what you're doing in your exam paper is writing to show that you show, yes, your knowledge and your understanding. But you're going to need to make this in a way that somebody could pick your work up and essentially go down to the hardware shop and buy all of the hardware and software that they need in order to create the infrastructure that you're going to suggest later on in Activity 3.